Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Activator, and I'm a Twitch streamer over on twitch.tv slash Activator, and I'm here to show you guys today something kind of cool that maybe you just came up and purchased, and that's the uh, the overlays and packs and whatnot coming in from movegraph.com. And I'm here to show you guys exactly how to install, look at, and see every little bit and piece that's going to take your production value of your streams to the next level. Now, everything I'm about to show you guys today can be applied and used towards the other overlay pack. So it's not just this one, but it's for all of them, which makes it nice and simple. So if you do it one time, you know how to do it for all of them. So today I'm going to show you guys this brand new overlay pack that is on the move graph website right now. And it's called the Halex or the Halx. I'm not sure how you say that this is the blue version and there is multiple different colored versions out there so you can choose what best fits your stream now you can see over here we do have a bunch of animated overlays and and modular elements to build your stream the way that you will want it now you can customize this however you want you're going to get a bunch of different styles of overlays to implement into your streams as well as you're going to get some panels and you're going to get some nice just elements to bring together and really customize the way that your stream is going to look. It's going to take it that much further in the production value department. Once you make your purchase and once you get the overlay of your choice, you're going to get a zip file. You can see on the top right of my screen here, I'm going to go ahead and come up here to my brand new zip folder that I just downloaded. And I'm going to go ahead and right click on it and go to 7-zip. Now you could extract all or if you have any type of uh, extraction software, that'll be fine. Uh, I'm just going to use 7-zip here and I'm going to extract files to the desktop where my folder is located by just hitting extract here. And it's going to instantly create a folder on the top. And that's going to be where all my files are now located. So now that we have our folder open down here, let's go ahead and take a look on the inside and see exactly what we got to work with. Now, in our first thing here, we got overlays. If I open that up, we got animated and non-animated versions of these overlays. So if I open up the animated version, you're going to see a bunch of .webm files that are going to be able to be opened up. Now, if I open these up, Keep in mind, they're going to look a little weird here, but I assure you when you install it into OBS, it's going to look completely different and super, super nice. So you can see we got a square looking one by one uh, camera overlay here. It looks like over here we got a 16 by 9 version and we got a bunch of other files associated with this, including some lower thirds for your latest sub, your latest donation and stuff. And all this is pre-made for you, so you don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to worry about typing a, a name or, or anything like that. You can simply just grab and drop these files into OBS. So much like the animated version we just saw, this is the, the version that's non-animated, and you can kind of see what it's going to look like when you put it into OBS. So on top of the camera overlays and all that stuff, we also have a couple of other things down here such as this holder right here that you can utilize for maybe you have a green screen for your camera and instead of having an, a camera overlay you would kind of put this as a holder to hold your green screen image on top of this and then you can put your information down below however you see fit if i keep moving right you can see we got different little pieces of modular designs that are kind of pre-made for you so you can just drag and drop them right into your stream and already have something that's working for you and maybe you can kind of combine and, and move around and create something that's more unique for your streams so taking another step back here we go back into the pack and we have ourselves some panels so if you guys are familiar with twitch's panels you can see here we do have ourselves a lot of extra panels for our twitch information about me section down below so if i go ahead and scroll right here you can kind of see we got a blank one that we could put our own words into. We got a cheers. We got contact. We got discord, donate, Facebook, all the stuff that you might need in your panels down below your Twitch channels to give your viewers information about you or your stream or your community. Let's go back over here and let's actually go look into uh, this folder called PSD for texts. Now this is going to offer you a lot of different stuff here. If I go ahead and open up these PNGs, you can kind of see that it says latest donation, latest subscriber, uh, new follower. They give you the Photoshop files so that you can mod the text on your screen to make it look how this looks here, but with your own words and your own letters and everything that you want to put on stream rather than maybe just latest cheer. So if you do need help on how to open up and manage these files, we do have another tutorial going over the whole Photoshop process on how to implement the text and, and get it changed how you see fit and how it's going to help you out and be best for your streams. Sometimes these packs will end up coming with a font. So if I open up, you're going to see we got Aldo the Apache, and that is a uh, another zip file. So I'm going to go ahead and extract that here inside this folder. So we're actually going to see that this is a, uh, a font that we can install onto our computer. So if I double click on this, you're going to see what it ends up looking like. You can kind of see the edginess to it here. And then we're going to go ahead and just click on install, and that's going to install this font to your computer. So we hit install. It's going to go through the font 
install it and now it's already installed and you can just click on out and the reason i didn't want to open up those photoshop elements earlier is because you need that font installed to open up and work with the fonts that they're using for their pack now you could swap out and use whatever font you want but you know, I assume you probably chose this pack for a reason, and maybe it's the, the, the font that's included is a part of that. In the resources file, you also got the MG icons, and this is going to allow you to uh, go ahead and make some sort of custom elements, maybe on screen, or maybe in your panels, or anything you want to like do it yourself and have your own custom version of how your streams are going to look, whether that's your panels or your on screen elements. But it's going to give you a lot of uh, icons here to keep it all concise and all the same level of production value that you probably got this pack for in the first place. So also down here, we have pre-made text. And if I go ahead and double click on this, you can kind of see that we already have a new follower, latest subscriber, new follower, and we got a bunch of different uh, pre-made elements. Now you don't need to use these. These are just available to you if you choose to want to use them. So now that we have our instance of OBS open, I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. And I'm going to go ahead and start my scene off here with a nice background from MoveGraph. And it's going to be this simple moving camera down a kind of corridor here. And you're going to notice one thing that happens here in just a moment when this file actually stops playing. Now, when the file stops playing, it ends up going to a black screen. So for everything that is an animated overlay, you're going to need to double click on that and go to a loop. And that's going to keep the video looping. So even when it ends down here on the right, you can see it's going to loop back to the beginning and it starts again. And because the move graph does such a good job here, it is a seamless transition and continues to move down this corridor. So we're going to go ahead and leave it like this. I'm going to go ahead and lock that in place. Now, our next step, we're going to need to add a camera. So I'm going to go ahead and come over here and add a video capture device. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to go find my video capture device. I'm thinking this one looks pretty good. It has my camera that I want. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Next step is I want to uh, start placing my overlays and everything that I'm thinking that I want for this, uh, this setup. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink down my camera to where I feel like I might want it. Maybe up top is looking kind of nice. And uh, this is going to be my generic scene that I'm thinking is going to work for my entire stream setup. My next step is to come over here and we're going to go ahead and start adding our overlays. Now, normally when you add overlays, you can right click and hit add and start adding your sources, your, your media sources. So if we go ahead and add media source, we're going to call this 16 by nine camera overlay. I'm going to hit OK. Now we're going to choose a file so I can hit browse here. And if I uh, come over to my overlays and go find the animated version, because I was thinking the animated looked pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and click on the 16 by nine and hit open. Now that's going to open up this in a second. But before I actually hit OK, I want to make sure this thing is looping because again, it is a video file and it will run out and then fade to black and you don't want that. So I'm going to hit the little loop file there. I'm going to hit OK. And now we have ourselves the animated overlay. And if I go ahead and blow this up real big, you kind of see that it is animated. It's moving and it's looking pretty neat. I'm going to drag this over my webcam over here. And that's looking pretty good on the top right hand side. So I'm thinking if I keep shrinking this down here and kind of find a little sweet spot, I'm thinking this looks pretty good. If you wanted to take a look at how your image is looking besides just going full screen like this, because that's only going to get you so big, you can go ahead and right click right here and go to full screen projector preview and hit preview. And now we are full screen. And if I hide this, uh, you can kind of see this is our scene and this is looking pretty good. I'm liking how this is looking. I got my nice overlay here on the top and uh, I think this looks really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and close out of the preview. And now we're back here and we can actually see our OBS. And now that I'm liking where the uh, the camera overlay is, I'm going to go ahead and lock that in. So now even if I'm touching it, I can't grab it and I can't move it and it's not going to go anywhere. But we got to move to our next step. So not only can you add a source by right clicking and adding, you can also use the plus icon here to do the same thing. Or you can take it one step even faster and just go find the source that you want. So if I go back in here, my overlays, if I just open up this folder and maybe we go find something lower blue base, maybe this one right here, let's go ahead and just drag this in. Now, when you drag it in, it's instantly going to create the file that you want. And you can see it's right here sitting. Now you got to check that you have this on loop or else the video is going to uh, disappear here in a second. And it does. So we double click on this file. We click on loop. And we hit OK. And now we have this file here that we can do whatever we want with. Now, if I hide my background, you can kind of see this file is sitting here and it's looking pretty good. You can see that it's animated and whatnot. And I love this little sparkle. It looks super nice. And we're going to go ahead and shrink this back down. Now, I'm feeling that I'm kind of wanting this on the bottom of my screen, but I feel like it would look a little bit cooler if it was actually flipped the other way. Now, one thing you can do here is you can right click on the source and you can go to transform and you can flip it 90 degrees, 180 degrees, clockwise, counterclockwise, or 180 degrees, or you can flip horizontal or vertical. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to rotate this thing by 180 degrees, and that's going to flip it upside down. But I'm going to close out of this. For aesthetic reasons, I like how the blue is on the right of this frame more than it is on the left. But you can see this overlay has it on this side. Now, what I can do is I can right click, go back over to transform, and I can hit flip horizontally. 
And now it's going to put this on the right side that I think looks best. And I'm going to go ahead and take this and drag it down to the bottom of my screen. And I'm thinking that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to go ahead and lock that in by hitting the little lock symbol here. Now, if we turn back on our background, you can see this is kind of my overall setup at the moment. Now we can keep adding to this again. So I'm going to take a couple more files here and I'm going to start to position things on screen to get something that kind of looks something that I would like. So I've gone ahead and I've created something that I feel like is kind of a nice little setup. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click, we go to full screen projector. We project it to our main screen here. I'm gonna hide my other camera. You can see this is now our setup. I kind of liked this idea of it kind of just being kind of clean, not too invasive. It has a lot of space for uh, your gameplay or whatever you have in the background, as well as I put these bars on the top and uh, left side, just to kind of have a little bit of a overall like border with the, uh, the setup, but I didn't want it too cumbersome. So I thought this looked kind of nice and it kind of fit the, uh, the thinness kind of fitted the uh, the border of the 16 by 9 overlay here. One thing I didn't show you guys, you can actually take a source much like this one right here and you can scale it to however you want. Now, not only can you scale it, but you can also hit shift. And if you hold it, you can actually squeeze the image. So what I did to match the size of this border is I go, I went ahead and I squeezed it down and then I kind of moved it into place to where I thought it was looking nice. I thought maybe somewhere about there was looking pretty good. Again, we go back to full screen, take a look at it. And I'm thinking this looks pretty good to me. So just like that, you can see just how simple it is to throw in items onto your OBS and start to customize the way your stream looks. I'm feeling like this looks 10 out of 10, super clean and nice. And it's just simply adding a few animated uh, things here and there, as well as some static text. I made a little slideshow and now I put these little icons here and you can go to uh, youtube.com slash activator. You can go to uh, the next one, which is Discord. You got to think outside the box when you start to put these things down here. Keep that in mind that you guys can create your own elements and kind of bring everything to a whole and nice. Just look, I, I, I'm loving the way this looks right now and I'm feeling this is pretty good. And now I would be happy to go and start streaming. So one more thing I can kind of show you guys is how to create something a little bit more unique utilizing the assets that are given to you. So what I actually want to do is create something new utilizing the assets that are inside the folder. For this one, we're gonna have a non-animated version and we're gonna go find our lower uh, base. And we're gonna go ahead and add this to our uh, our image. So now that we have this added, I'm gonna go ahead and shrink this down a little bit. We're also gonna scale it and squeeze it and kind of shift it to the way I'm thinking is gonna look good. So now I wanna go ahead and come down here to our newest uh, lower third here or our, 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 our base. And I wanna go ahead and right click on it. And I wanna hit copy. I wanna right click again and hit paste a duplicate. And now we have two, but what I want to do is I want to right click yet again. I'm going to come over here to transform and I'm going to flip it horizontally. Now you can kind of see that I, what I might be doing here is putting this down here like so. And if I go ahead and alt click and drag, I'm actually going to squeeze this down to something like that. And if I take it on this side and do the exact same thing, you can see now we have two images. Now that I've eyeballed it, we're going to go ahead and minimize this here. So now that I've eyeballed it, these kind of match up and it's looking pretty good. Now what I want to do is I want to combine these to one brand new source that I'm creating myself. What I want to do is I'm going to click on the base and I'm going to click on our copied base and we're going to go ahead and right click and I'm going to go to group. And when we set a group, group selected items, now we have a group where both of these are inside of, but we're going to rename it to lower base. I'm gonna go ahead and click and that's looking pretty good. So now you can see right here, we have our lower base. Now that I'm liking this, I'm thinking this is looking pretty good, but it's on top of everything else. So I have to drag this down just above my camera. And now you can see maybe this is something I'm actually more inclined to, uh, to utilize. So I'm actually going to shrink down this text, maybe put this right here. Maybe go find this text over here, shrink that down as well and put that maybe right here. Maybe now I'm feeling this a little bit more, but let's take it one step further and let's actually combine all of our camera elements here. So we're going to make our own camera overlay element. So I'm going to take our 16 by nine. I'm also going to take our video capture. And I'm also going to take our V2 blue and we're actually going to create another group and we're going to call this camera. Now you don't have to do this, but this is one way to keep things kind of clean. You can kind of see how you can set up your own sort of uh, overlay within a couple minutes. Now we didn't take too long here and you can see just how far along we got. I'm feeling like this all looks pretty good and maybe I'm ready to start streaming. I would hit the start streaming and we would be good to go. So just like that, we are done and this is looking mighty, mighty nice. Everything that's mentioned here in this video today is available on movegraph.com. There are multiple different colors, styles for alerts, overlays, everything that you could possibly want for your stream setups to make it look that much better than the next guy. All the information I showed you guys today can be applied to all the different overlay packs from movegraph.com. Go see if there's something that suits you to fit your stream style today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope this helped you out. And until next time, good luck, happy streaming, and I'll catch you on the next video. All right.